Hey guys, it's Norm from Tested.com. I'm here in New York City at the Art of the Brick exhibit in the Discovery Center, uh, Times Square. Now we're big fans of Lego here on Tested, the champions of Lego, but I don't think we've met a bigger fan of Lego than Nathan Sway <laughs> here. Hey Nathan, this is your exhibit. This is my exhibit. Thanks for coming and checking it yeah, out. Yeah, absolutely. And you've been building Lego professionally as a sculptor for almost a decade now. Yeah, uh, I left uh, my former job. I was mm -hmm. a, an attorney here in New York City. <laughs> All right. I was a corporate attorney and I left that to uh, play with bricks full time. And that's what I do. I, I have fun. I create artwork using just Lego bricks. And a lot of people might have seen your work online. We're standing right in front of one of your most famous pieces. Sure. Uh, yellow? Yellow. And that's because I love Coldplay. Of course. <laughs> no. uh, yes, yellow has become a very iconic piece. I have seen it in so many different places over the years. And it's very representative of the type of sculpture you do because it's monochromatic I, and you're very interested in the human form. Yeah, I think the human form was something that I discovered really worked out of Lego bricks. I think Lego is fun as a toy and we've all played with it and built cars and trucks. But when you start taking it into a different realm, and that's into the contemporary art world, I wanted to focus on something different, and that was the human form. Because not only was it fun to sculpt like that, it also could put some emotion into the artwork and really take it to the next level. As someone who works with thousands and thousands of bricks, yeah. millions of bricks I, even. I'd go with millions. Millions yeah. of bricks. Uh, you have studios. Yes. You work like an artist has studios to work purely right. of Lego. Can you describe what happens in the studio? All right, so the art studios, I have one in New York and one in Los Angeles, and they are full of millions of bricks each. And on those, uh, in those studios are shelves and shelves where all the bricks are sorted by shape and color. Of course, I, I need that because when I'm working, I want to be able to just grab bricks depending on what I need. Now the process, of course, it all starts with an idea, and that's what the, the main thing is. Once I come up with that idea, whatever it is, there's a lot of doodling and sketching. That's an important component. And I actually carry a sketchbook with me wherever I go, so I can jot down ideas. Fortunately, I get to travel a lot. Um, I have exhibits all over the world, and so I carry that sketch pad. So whenever I'm in a different place, meeting different types of people, different cultures, I can you know, use that and kind of feed off of that for the idea. And then when I get, get into the more sophisticated sketching, I'm working on something called brick paper. Now brick paper is kind of like graph paper, but instead of having squares like on the graph paper in math class, it has little rectangles that are the shape of Lego bricks. So that helps and kind of starts a blueprint for when I'm working. So it's not something done on the computer? Uh, no, now I'm drawing this out by hand. Oh, okay. Now when I get into the actual sculpting, there are times where I, I need to glue things. And that's mainly because um, over time I've learned that uh, when you're shipping Lego sculptures around the world, they need to arrive in one piece. It's funny, museums get grumpy when they open up a crate and it's just loose Lego bricks. Right. They and make... a sign that says, some assembly required. <laughs> you don't include an instruction manual. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Guide. So I've learned I ha the hard way that I have to glue everything together. So while I'm working, I will actually put a little bit of glue on each individual Lego brick. Each layer. Each layer, each brick. Wow, so uh, there's no going back, even. Well, I mean, there is going back to a certain extent, um, if you're good with a hammer and chisel, which I am. <laughs> um, you know, the hammer and chisel is an important component, though, because uh, I've, I've been working on projects where uh, it's a week have, has gone by, I look at where it's at, and I'm like, this doesn't look right. And I will have to chisel away days or hours worth of work, depending, wow. and go back. So you need a lot of patience for this job. It is not something that happens overnight. These sculptures take weeks to create. And you personally lay every brick, right? You don't have like a team of assistants. That, that no, I'm, I am the one artist in my shop. Uh, this is what I love to do is, is the actual building. Uh, so I have a great team that helps with all the logistics, the packing, the crating, the shipping. But when it comes to the art, that's me. That's these hands. And I'm sure this is a question you get asked a lot, but where do you get the Lego from? Do you work with the company, Lego? Do you place yeah. a phone call? Well, I have a very good business relationship with the Lego company. I'm a very unique customer. I actually have um, developed a relationship where I can email them and buy millions of bricks at a time. Pick um, up a phone and say, I need 100,000 red rectangular bricks. Yeah, it's something like that. I, I usually get a, a few thousand bricks every month, a few tens to 100,000 bricks every month, and they're big shipments. I mean, it's, it's kind of surreal when you see pallets of Lego bricks being dumped out on the sidewalk here in New York in front of my studio, but that's how it works. But it's and not, they're not connected. They're, no, they're, right. no, they're loose in boxes. Okay. Now you mentioned you also have like a relationship with Lego. About right. a decade ago, you got the title of Master Builder. So those people are the people who build the sculptures for like Lego stores or- Right, or Lego, Lego, Land, Lego Land and that type of 
right. stuff. For me, I wanted to be able to take on different projects and kind of choose my own path. But at the time, it was fun and interesting to, to just get the title Master Builder. So to get that title, there is an interesting exam process, part of which involves building a sphere. Oh, that makes sense. It's, yeah. You, you, you have think to get, it's, it's like drawing a sphere is not easy. <laughs> building a sphere in Lego, of all things, right. can't be that easy. Well, it's all about curves, right? In the end, that's what's important. So during the exam, what, what, what happened was they gave me a pile of bricks and 45 minutes and said, build a sphere. And then after I worked for a while and finished up my sphere, the next part was to take that sphere and roll it across the floor. And if it rolled properly, you move on. If it just kind of goes off to the side, you've likely built a cube. Now, um, you know, the, it, it's important that it actually rolls. Now, another question I'm sure people ask when they see sculptures, three-dimensional sculptures is, what's inside? Is it right. all Lego brick? Right, a lot of folks ask, is, are the sculptures hollow or solid? Mm -hmm. And they're actually hollow. As you can see in yellow, as you can see into the chest cavity there, it's hollow. And that's how it is with almost all the sculptures. The main reason is because it'd be so heavy and you just don't need it to be solid. Plus it'd be a little expensive. But there are support structures on the side. Right, there's lattices built out of Lego bricks. It's like a 3D print almost. Yeah, a little bit, exactly. There, there'll be lattice work crisscrossing mm -hmm. throughout the sculpture to make sure it's keeping its form. And in terms of scale, some of the work, it's massive. We're talking Banks. about yeah. 50,000 pieces or so. Oh, or more. Or, or more. Scale, is that something that interests you? Well, I think it's fun, you know, doing these exhibitions to have a few big pieces that are gigantic. There's a dinosaur here that measures over 20 feet long and uses over 80,000 Lego bricks. You know, it's pretty fun to walk into a room. It's fun for me to be in the room and watch kids' mouths drop open when they mm -hmm. see this thing. Um, so scale is kind of a key component on, on at least some of the work. It's tough because it takes time. That dinosaur, for example, took me three months to build. It was an entire summer I was working on it. And so to devote yourself to a project like that uh, for three months can drive you a little crazy at times. I was working on those ribs just going like, oh my God. A lot of people build you know, spaceships or robots. You ever dabble in the the more non-sculptural shapes, maybe more? Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, I grew up with Lego bricks, so over the years I've built all sorts of things, right? Um, for me right now, I, I focus on my art, uh, and Lego is an art medium. I, I don't have a lot of Lego bricks at my home. It's all at the studio. That's where I play, but it's also where I work. And so a lot of the time it's just working on projects that are pushing my art forward. Um, but yeah, I still play and I can totally appreciate, you know, those amazing castles and the spaceships and uh, stuff out there is amazing. And I think what I've seen over the years is that more and more people are getting into Lego as an art form, yeah. you know, and be it, you know, making amazing spaceships or even making amazing sculptures. More and more people email me and say, Look, I've seen what you're doing. I'm going to do it. I'm going to be like you. Even artists, established artists have contacted me and said, I'm going to incorporate Lego into what I do. So I would not be surprised that in the next few years, it's actually like a Lego art movement. I mean, it's becoming more and more popular to this day. Have, have you thought about collaborations with other artists? I have, I've done some, some collaborations. Um, I worked with uh, photographer Dean West. Now Dean does very amazing uh, hyper-realistic pho photography. And uh, Dean, Dean's photography, it was just a perfect fit. We, we talked about this for a few years about how we can make this happen and we collaborated on a project where we took his photography and my sculptures and integrated the two. So we did these large prints of, of different scenes and then somewhere in the scene, part of the, part of the scene is built out of Lego. And it gives it a very pixelated look to it because of course Lego is, is a bit pixelated. All those little squares and rectangles give it that pixelated feel. Now we put it into a photograph that gives it a little bit more meaning. And then when we do an exhibition of that work, we're able to have both the photograph and the artwork at the same time on display and kind of really surround the people with the work. And I've heard you've also done some street art. I do do a bit of street art, yeah. yeah. So yeah. Talk a little about that. I have something called Hugman. Now Hugman is a little figure, he's about 15 inches tall, and um, he just hugs things. He hugs signposts, he hugs uh, trees, bike racks, and I've left hundreds of them all over the city over the years. Um, they're, they're just my way of putting a smile on people's faces. Do you stand around and see what people, the reaction? And well, yeah, it, from time to time I, I've hung out, I've gone to like a coffee shop uh -huh. and watched. Um, you know, it's New York, so uh, some people stop and take photos, some... They want a Nathan Sway original. Yeah, right. so I, I've seen some Hugman walk away over the years, <laughs> but that's part of the fun.
All right. And do you feel like it's been a challenge convincing people? I know early on probably that Lego was, it could be an art medium? Yeah, I think when I was first doing this, um, I had galleries who kind of laughed at the idea. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm trying to create art out of Lego. And they expected to see cars and trucks and toy sets. I was like, no, it's not, it's not what you're thinking at the toy store. This is something completely different. Fortunately, over the years, I've had opportunities to do solo exhibitions, and now the art community has come around, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, this exhibition has been critically acclaimed, so it's been pretty exciting. And what would you have to say to people out there who maybe want to dabble in Lego art? You know, I think it's important to dabble in any type of art, right? I mean, that's the whole idea, is that I hope that this type of exhibition inspires folks to really create on their own. And it doesn't have to be human-sized sculptures that take months to create. It could be whatever you're doing, just a little bit of doodling, figure painting with the kids, or maybe building with Lego. All of it's important because it makes people happier. I mean, just doing a little doodling will make you a happier person. I mean, not to mention, you know, like, you know, there's studies out there that if, if kids are exposed to art in their curriculum, they do better in school, higher graduation rates, art makes you healthy, art makes you smarter, art makes you happy. Go do some art. And you'll be doing this for the foreseeable future. Well, I've got a few million bricks, so yeah, I don't see any stop use them all, for a right? while. Exactly. Well, well, thank you so much, Nathan, for, for showing coming. us the exhibit. It's in, uh, it's in Times Square, yep, going Discovery on until January. Yep. And you have exhibits all around the world, like you said. So. Yeah, you can check it out at BrickArtist.com. Well, thank you, Nathan. I'm Norm from Test It. You can see more of Nathan's art on his site, BrickArtist.com, and more videos of makers, whether it's Lego or clay or anything, on Tested. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you next time.